people have been asking for them, um, the audio, but we thought if we can get Lisa's camera, we'll just do it. So welcome this morning, South Korea, Europe, Amen. the Netherlands, amen, a lot of people from the Netherlands, and so this is kind of exciting. We hope it works. If it doesn't, we got the audio recording as well. So we have a very awesome thing we're going to discuss this morning, fasting. Amen. <laughs> One of your favorites. The title of my message this morning is Fasting for Personal Revival. Fasting for Personal Revival. But I got to share with you what God has done in the last week. Tuesday night I was worshiping and praying and God reminded me three weeks ago, he told me to anoint Highway 97 and Joe Wright Road. He said, Randy, go out and pour oil all the way across Highway 97, Sarah. <coughs> so here's Randy at 1 o'clock in the morning making sure I don't get hit by a semi. And then he said, Amanda, some of these nights you're going to have to go anoint highways with me, man. She's like, I'm going to stay home. <laughs> So then I, then I anointed Joe Wright Road, and you guys, some people fly down Joe Wright Road like 70 at 1 o'clock in the morning, so I was even looking. So three weeks ago, God told me to anoint Joe Wright Road and Highway 97, um, and I did. When I asked him, why do you want me to do that, he didn't tell me why. So this Tuesday, while I was praying and worshiping, I had a vision. Where I had anointed the roads, Sarah, they split open. So I'm in here in the sanctuary, worshiping and praying, and now I have a vision three weeks later of where I anointed Joe Wright Road and Highway 97, it split open. And as the roads split open, I'm so excited I gotta stay with my notes. So <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me, you on. YouTube land. So Highway 97 and Joe Wright Road split open, just a crack, and a curtain of fire came up out of the cracks and went up about 20 feet high and remained there, Sarah. The whole width of Highway 97, the whole width, just a curtain of fire. And it's still there this morning. Amen. Burning. I got to slow down, man. <laughs> Isaac, this is going to change our life this morning. Mm. Amen. 20 feet high, Joe Wright Road, and I said, God reminded me of a word from a local intercessor here in Klamath who was at Combine with several other prayer warriors. They had asked to come into Combine, Mike, and they took out all the chairs. There was probably about 40 intercessors in here a few years ago. And God told them to come here and begin to pray over Combine. This was several years ago. God reminded me. She had a vision of the fire, of fire underground on the 12 acres of Combine. So this intercessor was in here praying and she saw a vision, Sarah, of fire burning underneath the ground, waiting, waiting. Getting ready to come forth. She said a great shaft of light was going up to heaven from the center of the roundhouse. She said she could see where these mirrors were, that a shaft of light was going into heaven. I believe that's intercession. Mm -hmm. And that God was putting an x-ray machine across Highway 97, and Combine was the gatekeeper of Highway 97. God. That God was going to put an x-ray machine from Combine across Highway 97. Now, this was a few years ago, but God in prayer was reminding me of this word. God told me Tuesday, this Tuesday, the fire from the combine has now spread from the church property to Joe Wright Road and Highway 97. So now, Kathy, it's moved. It's moved out under these roads. And as we were praying, 
those places that were anointed with oil cracked open, and now Sarah in the spirit realm, like Hawaii, a fissure, a curtain of fire now is burning. Then God told me his fire is the x-ray machine. It took me a while, Melody, because I kept thinking x-ray machine like at an airport or something. And God told me Tuesday night, he goes, no, Randy, my fire is the x-ray machine. And it reminded me of Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, says, refined in the fire. See, when the fire of God touches you, it refines you. Amen? Amen. The definition of refined, unwanted elements removed. When the fire of God hits you, unwanted elements are removed. And the other definition of refined is purified. Purified by fire. Jesus said, buy from me gold refined in the fire. God has now placed a curtain of fire on Highway 97 and Joe Wright Road as the gatekeeper. Now these roads going in and past Combine, God's presence, they're having to drive right through it. Amen. It gets better. It gets way better. <laughs> oh, Randy's just flapping his gums. Oh, okay. That's okay. You can have that opinion. We got some other people that are going to chime in. God's revival fires are starting to burn. I saw this person who had given me the word years ago, the next day. The next day, Kathy, the person that gave me this word, I saw her the next day. And I wrote here in my notes, YouTube people, not planned. <laughs> God's got some things that you don't have planned, planned. <laughs> I told her what God told me to do on the roads around the church. She said, Randy, Randy, Randy. <laughs> on the National Day of Prayer, I think it was in May, Missy told me, I think it was in May. It is, yes. She had planned on having this whole group of Klamath intercessors pray. And she didn't even know the date she picked was the National Day of Prayer. She said, Randy, you need to listen to this. All the intercessors of the basin, they thought it would take four hours, Sarah. Me and Sarah are just talking this morning. Ben will include you, Ben. <laughs> All the intercessors gathered together and they thought it would take four hours, Mike, to do what God asked them to do. And they met past Chiloquin at Call Your State Park. And God told them, Sarah, to begin to anoint the highways. Hmm. They went in a 50 plus mile perimeter of the basin. Yeah, Molly. Anoint the highways. Three weeks later, guess what God's having Randy do? Run out in the street. <clears throat> they went in a 55 mile perimeter praying for revival. Fires. Baby. Bonanza. Malin. Tui Lake, Doris, yes. down, out, what's that, Clover Creek, Dead Indian, all the way over to 140, anointed it, went out to Rocky Point, then went out to Fort Klamath, 12 hours, the same intercessors that came to Combine years ago were out anointing roads. I know you think I'm a fool, but I'm a fool for Christ. Amen. Randy, I need to tell you this. <clears throat> Bring it on, girl. And I've been speaking 
that God will draw people from a 55 mile perimeter easily to Columbine. People will drive an hour one way, no problem now. No problem. <clears throat> I did not know that when God told me to anoint the rose, we tapped into that agreement. For Klamath Basin revival fires to start to burn. <clears throat> right now, the fire in the spirit realm is starting to come forth from this property spreading to Highway 97 and Joe Wright Road. This weekend, after the 12 months, this is the first weekend after the 12 months to build the core. I'm glad you're here. Amen. <clears throat> and Sarah God goes, nobody up front anymore for a season. The intercessor told me, she goes, Randy, God is tired of the performance. He's tired of the performance. I've been around a lot of worship teams for a lot of years, and a lot of times it gets technical. It tries to get perfect. And that's not even criticizing our worship team that's here, but God's standing for combine. Take a time out, put the worshipers in the seats, turn on the sound system. Amen. Was it good this morning? Amen. Amen. Those of you watching by YouTube are going, what are they doing? So after 12 months, God said, I'll build the core group at Combine. And it's not by accident that people are beginning to pray for Combine from all over America and the world. You should have seen this text I got this week um, from Palm Springs. Um, how the life after death video, the woman just, you know, started crying. Said, I'm going to be in church this Sunday at Palm Springs. Amen. Yay, God. Yeah, amen. Woo. Combine now is motivating around the world. Amen? Amen. That's not boasting in us, but it shows you the power that God can do through the teachings and uh, the videos. Mm -hmm. Now the world and America is praying through the internet for our ministry to become a harvesting location for Jesus. That was just the appetizer. Now we're getting ready for the message. <laughs> and I got one more thing. I went to bed this morning about four. I've been praying. And God said, Randy, I want you to open <clears throat> the house of prayer. I said, you do? He said, yeah. I talked to the House of Prayer in Washington and I talked to the leader there a couple years ago. He had moved from IHOP in Kansas City, I think. There was about 20 churches. Come, open a House of Prayer. <clears throat> We're in it. I'm not going to name names or anything just to be sensitive. But within a short period of time, Ben, he's the only person there. All of them stopped coming. He moved his family and everybody. But Sarah, this is what he told me. He goes, Randy, start out small. He goes, when God finally tells you to open your house of prayer, start out small. And Sarah, this morning when God was speaking to me, I could hear his voice. Because so many times we try to start stuff out big and people fall off. So God said on Tuesday nights at 7.45. And guys, and Billy, when he told me 7.45, I'm still shaking. And some of you don't know the magnitude of what that means. But in 1935, the revivals on Mitchell Street, God told them to have the services at 745. 
Now, we, we've got pews from Mitchell Street. Mm -hmm. This pulpit right here is from Mitchell Street. The cross out in the field is from Mitchell Street. <laughs> God has never, Kathy, told me, do something at 745. Mm -hmm. And when we met some of the people that were still alive, most all of them have died unless they were small children. Nobody remembered why 745. I, I mean, Mike, seven nights a week in 1939, that's late. But God said, Randy, now you can start the house of prayer on Tuesday nights, 745. And just like the man of God told us, start out small. We've had two teams from Bethel come here. And every time they've come here, the two times, they've called this place God's living room. So even though we're going to call it Tuesday night, House of Prayer, 745, its nickname is going to be God's Living Room. Yes. Amen? Amen? If you come on a Tuesday, you'll know what we mean. That's why yeah. Pastor Kevin was wiped out over here on the carpet. <laughs> All right. I got a couple minutes. <clears throat> so be praying about Tuesday night, House of Prayer. Fasting for personal revival. <clears throat> the definition of fasting is to abstain from food. To abstain from food. Now, I'm a full-time personal trainer, and I also do in-home physical therapy, and people pay me $50 an hour to help them lose weight. And I'm blessed abundantly. But I guarantee you, you start fasting, it'll start coming off. Amen? Amen. To abstain from food. God has been <clears throat> showing me the body of Christ has been eating God's portion. The first cantaloupe is his. The other nine are yours. God has showed me that people, instead of giving tithes and offerings at the beginning of the month, they're eating God's cantaloupe. Sarah, our tithe is actually on our bodies. At the first of the month when we are paid, isn't this awesome? This is our first YouTube video. Uh. <laughs> we, we, hope, we hope you watch again. <clears throat> I can hear the little keyboards. Click! <laughs> At the first of the month when we are paid, we indulge the flesh. Why is Walmart packed on the first? Mm. Oh, yeah. Why are the shopping carts full of God's tithe? Oh, yeah. Amen. And Isaac, there's a lot of trash in those shopping carts mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that we don't even need. And we use God's cantaloupe to buy it. Mm -hmm. At the first of the month when we are paid, we indulge the flesh and forget God's portion. Many times we consume things we don't need in our bodies. We eat, drink, and smoke out of habit, not necessity. Yeah. Our bodies are not hungry, we're just bored. Yeah. We're not even hungry, we're just bored. Right. Don't shout me down, I'm preaching good, Thailand. <laughs> Many times we consume things we don't need in our bodies, we eat, drink, and smoke out of habit, not necessity. Our bodies are not hungry. We're just bored, idle. God intended food to fuel our bodies so we can move. You eat so you can move. You don't eat so you can sit. So we can move and glorify him. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. As you fast, you create a spiritual discipline and clarity. The Holy Spirit controls you, not your flesh. Amen. I guarantee you, you start fasting, Pillsbury Doughboy will start talking to you. Because <laughs> yes. Pillsbury Doughboy lives inside of you. Or he's hanging off your side. <laughs> 
You will never experience revival in your life if you cannot tell your flesh no. You will never experience revival in your life until you can tell your flesh no. Six packs of soda at Walmart on the shelf, no. 24 pack of water, yes. Yes. Amen. We hope you watch again. Is it still on? Or is it? Yes. Go. As you fast, you create a spiritual <clears throat> discipline and clarity. You'll never experience revival in your life if you cannot tell your flesh no. How can God use you to be a carrier of his fire if the voice of your flesh is louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit? And Mike, I got some scripture at the end to make this legal. I, I kept writing this message. I go, Lord, I don't have any scripture. He goes, hold on, big boy. Just keep writing. It's coming. I was like, and we got some good scripture. If the voice of your flesh is louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit, revival never starts in mass groups of people. It usually always starts in individuals who sacrifice and start to burn then it catches others on fire. Somebody in Klamath in the basin is going to have to sacrifice. Amen. Somebody is going to have to sacrifice to where they start to burn, sir, and it catches others on fire. That's why I said personal revival. Some of you are trying to adopt someone else's experience. Some of you are trying to, we'll bring in guest speakers from all over and try to adopt their momentum. You have to birth revival for yourself. Yes. You have to birth it for yourself. Yes. Would you agree? Yes. It never starts in mass groups. It starts in individuals. Catches us on fire. Individuals then touch the masses. One car pulled off the road in the weeds in Reading. Yeah. Yes. One car yeah. pulled off the road in Reading into the weeds. Mm -hmm. Within two days, or within one day to the next day, I'm not saying that it was just two days, within that period of time, 80,000 acres later yes. yeah. is burning. Yes. One car in the weeds. Some of you, when you get on fire, it's going to ignite. Come on. And we are praying for those families. Yes. I, Men, have, I have a testimony. Afters. Thanks, Sherry. Many of you, God is waiting to use to start the revival fires burning. The lost are dry. The fire of the Holy Spirit brings life. Yes. The lost are dry right now, Kevin. And Billy, and the Holy Spirit brings life. God is an all-consuming fire. What consumes you and your time? Your life is a moment. What is consuming you this morning? What is consuming your time at the first of the month when you get paid? What is your first thought about that blessing coming in? Is it God or Fred Meyer? God. Is it God or Thunderbird? Is it God or I got to put gas in my car? Let's go to Matthew 4, 1 through 4. Some of you watching by the internet, you need to start fasting so God can give you some clarity of what he wants you to do. Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. 
The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on McDonald's alone. Man shall not live on Taco Bell alone. Man shall not push people down at Walmart to get bread. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Many of you don't need to eat. Amen. You're trying to find some endorphin rush to make you feel better by eating. That's proven. But if you would press into God and say, you know what, Pillsbury Doughboy, you're going to die today. Pillsbury Doughboy, you are going to starve today. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to be a ding dong for ding dongs anymore. <laughs> I think they found a Twinkie a while back. It was 20 years old and it still tasted like death. <laughs> the guy ate it. That just marches right down into the arteries. I hope, I hope. <laughs> Not live on bread alone. Let's go to John 4. John chapter 4. <clears throat> the body of Christ has got to get in shape. We got to get in shape. We got a race to run. Amen. You start getting in shape spiritually, your body will come into alignment with it. That's right. Some of you this week are going to hear my tormenting voice. Why are you eating that? You're not even hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you drinking that? You're not even thirsty. Soda and sugar makes you more thirsty. That's why you see people walking out of the Circle K with a limp with a super gulp, man. <laughs> Amen. Then they go pour it on the terminal of their battery and it eats it off of there, yes. the acid. Oh, and right. you're putting that down your stomach. Yes. No. Somebody that owns Coke is going to see this and sue me. <laughs> well, Randy, I pray over it. Well, pray it doesn't go in your mouth. <laughs> It's a new season, Sarah. He's back. Matthew 4. John 4. I told you, I messed up this morning. John chapter 4, verse 31 to 34. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. That little Pillsbury Doughboy, come on, eat something. Come on, you're starving. No, you're not. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. That's right. I got stuff to eat that you know nothing about. They were constantly worried about the belly. Jesus was being fed by being obedient. Amen. Right. Eating has become a habit for some of you. Mm -hmm. It's morning, it's lunch, it's dinner. Mm -hmm. it, it's become this ritual. And you become exhausted because the fuel you're putting in your body can't run the race. Mm -hmm. We hope you watch again. <laughs> Verse 33 gets better. Then his disciples said to each other, each other, could someone have brought him food from Burger King to the King of Kings? Here goes Jesus again. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. 
man, when we find some people like this, really? and they start praying, yes. and food. Matthew 5, 6. And I'm almost done. Because I know you're enjoying this a lot. So I want you to stay hungry for the Lord. Matthew 5, 6. No wonder we had some people missing today. Yeah, I was like, uh-uh, you ain't going to go listen to this big mouth today. I know. I heard what you're going to be talking about. Matthew 5, 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Right. Less than 2% of the church in America ties. So every first of the month, God's cantaloupe gets eaten. And you know what, Alicia? All it would take is a little bit of just saying no to the flesh and yes to God. If somebody sends me an email on that statistic, if you've got a different one, let me know. We send more money than all nonprofits in America on dog food and cat food. All the nonprofits in America, we spend more money on dog food and cat food than all of them combined. So maybe we're feeding the flesh of our little dog. Don't feed your dog God's cantaloupe. What are you hungry for? What are you filling up on? Does God have your attention? Begin to fast and tell the flesh no. You will begin to hear God speak to you and the Holy Spirit will use you to spread revival fire. When Missy and I were in Gardnerville, and we got to be blessed to go on some of the Indian reservations in that area. We came very close to some of those Native American pastors. They said, for generations, when you hit seven days, the stench coming off of people's bodies from fasting. Just, they said it's seven days, and sometimes you got to get a little goofy in your head. But they said just toxins would begin to ooze out of people's bodies. That's why they always felt fast at least seven days. And I'm not speaking that over you. One of my clients the other day, this person's 130 pounds overweight. And I looked him in the eye because I've got this person in good shape physically. And I said, you don't need, need to eat for another 40 days. I was pushing them a little bit. But you know what? They went home that afternoon workout, Sarah, and didn't eat again until the next day. Said it felt like a million bucks. You can eat 600 calories, and if you're 30, 40 pounds overweight, and your body will distort as fat. I only ate 500 calories. The, the body goes, ooh, more for savings account. I'm not beating anybody up. I'm just saying, we want you around to bounce the devil around. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's hard for you to run hard if you're putting stuff in your body that's killing you. Mm -hmm. And now this person has started fasting. Mm -hmm. Has started telling himself, you know what? I'm not hungry. I'm going to drink a bottle of water. Yeah. I'm not hungry. I'm going to drink another bottle of water. And their personality is changing. Their demeanor is changing. Because now they're telling the flesh, no. Boy, this was a great first video. <laughs> I can hear people, yeah. So let's pray with people to receive Christ this morning. And if you watching my video, 
here in the church. You know, you don't get saved to not go to hell. That's not biblical. You get saved because someone loves you unconditionally. If I can scare you into making a decision, then you can get scared out. <clears throat> but if you get saved because you know Jesus loves you unconditionally, forgives you of your sins, you'll never tear that out of my hand. So let's just pray this prayer. Just repeat after me. You just want to bow your heads. Dear Jesus, I believe that you hung on the cross and died and paid for my sins. Jesus, I believe that you rose again on the third day. Jesus, I ask you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning on the internet, send us an email at lastdaysharvestministries.com. We'd love to hear from you. And also, get plugged in somewhere. Let somebody know you made that decision uh, this morning. And Father, we just come before you and, and we thank you for Climate Falls. Amen. We thank you that it's been prophesied over as a harbor of refuge for the West Coast. And, and God, we thank you for the intercessors. We thank you for the gifts and callings in the basin. That Lord, you're, you're just combining, you're drawing together, you're uniting God to see a great outpouring of your spirit here in Climate Falls that will spread all over the world, Lord. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house this morning. And we just pray blessing and favor. And, Lord, we pray you'd help us to discipline ourselves. Lord, we pray that you would help us to tell our flesh, no, you are not in charge of me. The Holy Spirit is in charge of me. Lord, we pray that we would discipline ourselves, Lord, to honor you that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that we would be careful what we're putting in and expecting a different result. God, we pray that we would hunger and thirst after righteousness and be filled with the fire of God in your vision for our lives. Lord, we're sorry that Taco Bell might go out of business and McDonald's if the Christians stop tithing to them. But Lord, we thank you that people will get saved and get on fire and we can sacrifice a McDonald's once in a while. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. 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 Awesome. Let's stand and give the Lord a clap offering. Uh, see you next week. Have an awesome